what we're finding in, in our initial research with other states is that they're starting to, uh, their law enforcement is enacting partnerships uh, with the federal government in order to identify illegals and then put them into the federal system. So uh, I think we've got some avenues, obviously, uh, for instance, with our highway patrol, uh, pulling over folks on the road uh, and having a, an ability and agreement with the federal government to identify the illegals and uh, get them uh, into a system, into the federal system uh, for them to take over. That's what we're seeing states having a success to, more of a partnership role between the state and the federal government um, in, in regard to identifying uh, illegal aliens. But I've talked with a few sheriffs who say that, that, no offense to your plan, but they yeah. say they already do identify them and they'll call ICE and if they don't have 12, let's say they only pull a car full over two or three, ICE isn't willing to come get them. Right. So how do you fix, if that's going to be the case, if the federal government's not going to do its side, what right. makes you think that you can change that? Well, what we've seen in one state, uh, the state of Oklahoma, is they uh, asked their attorney general to negotiate a memorandum of understanding with the federal government, and that literally is a contract between state and the government and its local entities and the federal government as to what each role is going to be. So what you're talking about is a legitimate frustration by sheriffs right now. And they'll say, well, if you didn't have a huge group, we're not going to come. Uh, that's because no contract exists between the state and the federal government as to what our policy is in regard to illegals entering the federal system. Uh, what a memorandum of understanding is going, going to involve is your state is going to say, if we're detaining illegal aliens, your policy is to come pick them up and we're willing to work with you as to how that's going to work, but we're not going to have a catch and release policy where, well, I only got one or two uh, illegals in my jail, so therefore I release, and just like you're going to release a small fish. We're not going to have a catch and release policy in the state anymore. That's the really important thing that a memorandum of understanding signed between the state and federal government is going to take care of in the future. Can you tick off a bullet point list of what, what else Oklahoma has done and what other states have done that you think might fly here? Well, we basically see uh, some partnerships uh, with law enforcement uh, in regard to uh, how they what I just referred to in the last question, there's a question of what uh, what public services get offered to uh, aliens that are identified as illegal in the state. And I think Senator Seymour made an important point. This is about enforcing the rule of law. Uh, we want to be as welcoming to legal uh, immigrants as as possible because they do they are an important aspect of our economy in many of our towns, including mine, the ones that I represent. Uh, but that is certainly uh, something that uh, we explore. So you take a look at the availability of public services and how law enforcement will partner with the federal government in regard to identifying illegals and getting them into the federal system. And I think that's a pretty that's that's what Oklahoma targeted. You, you talked about failure of Douglas Creek Police Department to identify illegal this issue, but ultimately, isn't this a, a huge indictment against the Bush administration? I mean, you, you, you said right up front, this should be a federal role, and they're advocating it to the states. You want Ron to address that? He's the one who's going to try it, but I, I, I will if you want to. Well, I think in general, without pointing the finger at one particular administration, what is the overriding frustration uh, of, with, with, uh, with people in regard to talking to their legislators about, uh, about how we handle uh, illegal immigration, and that is just what Senator Seymour said. He said, "You know, this is a this is a basic function of government uh, to enforce the rule of law, and there has been a failure to do that at the federal level. I think it's been a long-standing failure that's just finally exploded in, in frustration uh, across the country and in Iowa. And they're asking state legislators now to stand up. And so I think it's a it's a general sense that the federal government." over a long period of time has not addressed the problem. I think that's the important point, Rob, is that this has not occurred over the last four, five, six, seven years. This is this is something that has been building and building and building. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's reached a level that uh, people in the United States are not willing to accept it any longer. And, and people, of, I, I believe people of, of this country are uh, no longer willing to 
to accept excuses on the issue. Um, this is sort of in the last three, four, five years really became become the focal point of conversation. But I think this problem has been around for a long, long time. It's just finally gotten to the point where people are tired of it and they won't move on. We heard during the presidential campaign about how many approximately were living in the nation anywhere, depending on the candidate in the day, is 12 to 20. Is there a ballpark how many we have here, illegals living in Iowa? You, you've, you've, Chris, you've got the numbers just like we do, and, you know, and we hear a lot about the number 12, and we hear a lot about the fact that two of the 12 uh, have committed crimes, and so I don't know. The thing is such a big problem, I'm not sure that there are really any accurate numbers out there. There's a lot of guesstimation going on. Thank you.